video games. They are a mental escape from the troubles of reality. <laughs> Hell, who doesn't love video games nowadays? Just like any other gaming nerd, I grew up surrounded by game consoles. As my passion for playing video games grew, I aged. I began to do what some people on YouTube call as Let's Playing. Basically, a simple Let's Player records a game that they desire to play, sometimes adding live or post commentary. After recording, they edit their footage that will later become an upload. It can be quite enjoyable for both the viewers and the player. After completing my first Let's Play on a game known as Bioshock, I was stumped as to know that the game I would play next. I began playing Tomb Raider as my second Let's Play, but my heart just wasn't into completing it right away. With one game on hold, I was still undecided on what to play. Surely there was a game I have around here in my room that can be a Let's Play. After pondering for a moment, I realized I did have a game called Fable, The Lost Chapters. I even recalled a memory of receiving this game from my father, who worked as a cop for numerous years. He gave it to me out of the blue one day, saying it was mine to keep without question. I gladly accepted it. And I'll admit, after playing repetitively over the years, the game had its glitchy moments. The most common glitch is when the game texture fails or a character has a few seconds to lay on the dialogues. It was expected from a dated game as early as this anyway. Either way, with having history of the game, I confirmed to myself that I would play Fable as my next Let's Play. My comfort zone while recording is usually sitting comfortably in my dark room, having only Christmas lights that were draped across my wall as the only source of light. I began one rainy night to do my ritual of hooking up all the recording equipment, my dazzle, and my microphone. Most importantly, testing how the mic picked up my voice, making sure dazzle would capture my gameplay through my TV, and after that, I'm usually ready to go. I was ready to begin, bringing my Xbox to life. Its green lights lit up as expected while opening to receive the game disc. Skipping through the introduction of the game, I was going straight to the game menu created a new save file, and was ready to begin my hero's journey into the fantasy world known as Elvian. My face automatically lit up with an excitement. I knew this game was going to be filled with numerous adventures. The game begins as my character, as a young boy, who experiences a tragedy from a bandit raid in his home village. His father, killed. His mother and sister, kidnapped. Everyone else within the small town didn't survive. But a miracle, though, the young boy survived through the whole bloodbath and was adopted shortly after the members of the Heroes Guild. There he began his training to be a true hero. The whole introduction to the story has already reeled itself, despite me knowing the outcome of the whole story of the game. I was ready to fight my battles and continue onward on my main quest. The older the hero got, the closer and closer he was to figuring out who exactly the villain was, and where he could find him. Long story short, the hero realized the culprit was Jack of Blades, an overpowered hooded masked man with an unsettling deep voice. He was a very mysterious character, and what was more mysterious was the fact that since he would appear a few times in the game, I would experience glitches. Don't get me wrong though, the game was pretty dated and some small glitches were expected, the scenery would be blurred until it finally corrected itself. The sky would sometimes be a little distorted, but, you know, small basic stuff. I continued onward, moving along, nearing the first boss fight with Jack of Blades himself. Since you have to fight against him twice in order to beat the game, in the second final fight he is reincarnated as a fire-breathing dragon which you have to slay. My heart was beating with excitement. My mindset was only focused on what journey lied ahead of me. The hero entered the chamber of fate within the guild. Jack of Blades was already waiting for me there. Immediately, his sword that he summoned was drawn. He was ready to fight. I scorched at him with my inflame power and returned. Jack shot off force field and the dark orbs my way. It felt like a non-stop battle. Jack was starting to show signs of weakness as his health bar began to slowly drop. Then it happened again, glitches starting appearing again during the fight. 
Only this time, it was the game lagging. I started to get nervous, fearing that the game would freeze. I fought though, despite of my lag. Then, victory. With a final lightning strike from my hand, Jack of Blades screamed in pain, and he gripped his pale and bloody mask and began to deteriorate it into nothingness. I won, I thought. I did it. I smiled with pride, not knowing I was halfway done with beating the game. Being the good hero that I was, instead of the villain of the story, all that remained of Jack was his deadly sword, which I destroyed as well. After my victory, I now awaited for the saving loading screen to finish. That's when things started to seem even more bizarre. The saving screen appeared, but instead of something else within the picture, two disturbing images of mangled bodies and a bloody face, what appeared to be two occult members upside down, and expressing demonic hand symbols pointing at the remains of a bony leg. What? What kind of crazy glitch is this? As soon as it came, it went, but the haunting images were forever remained in my mind, in my dazzle recording. Maybe it was just a texture pack mess up or something? Yeah, that could be the only logical explanation. I'm not trying to make this seem spooky, when it really isn't. After my mind was clear of no more distractions, the random thoughts about the images I've seen began to fluster. I realized that the loading screen had been frozen for a good 10 minutes. Is the game disk corrupted or something? I began to feel frustrated, but at least I saved my progress. I reset my Xbox and proceeded back to the save spot, hoping I could get past the loading screen. I wasn't going to give up so easily just because of a stupid game glitch as major as this. And again, to my disappointment, it froze the exact same spot again. This was getting ridiculous. I was very irritated. I reset the console again and tried to save the file a second time. Then, a hint of hope. The game began to start up some music. Finally, I thought. The screen eventually loaded up, showing the hero once again standing in the graveyard in his hometown. Instead of it being peaceful, like it should be, the area was very dull and gloomy. The sky was a blood reddish color. The music was changing into suspense. Controlling the hero was almost too difficult, too. Instead of walking, he would much prefer to walk in a slumped way, expressionless. Despite of my growing fear, I wanted to continue within the game to see what would happen next. I left the graveyard, and the loading screen appeared to be going back again. Frozen. <sighs> I was afraid to reset my council again, so I waited patiently. I was afraid to reset my console again, so I waited patiently. To my surprise, the game quickly loaded the hero back into a larger graveyard within the game. The sky was pitch black now, and the zombie enemies remained too, but never attacked me. Just stood there, frozen, and staring with blank eye sockets. The hero looked even worse than before. His face aged pale. His crooked frown staying in his place. Something is very wrong here. Then, an evil, familiar crackle. Jack's laugh echoed throughout the whole game, making my ears ring. My hands were clutching the controller. I wanted to let go and stop the game, but part of me told me I was trapped and I must keep going. Making the hero walk again, I limped over to the heart of the graveyard, meeting with a dark figure in front of him. The figure of the person looked like Jack, and was shadowed so you couldn't see it in any detail. I felt... I felt like as if I was peering into the hero's soul, past the TV into mine as well. The living corpses surrounding me, and the dark figure began to open their mouths wide. A mixture of choking sounds and emotionless moans increased, and the surroundings began to be distorted. Even the character's body parts in the environment. A familiar creature finally spoke. Jack of Blades is back. I knew it. He's still alive in this game. But he isn't reincarnated as a dragon. But why? 
Before I could even react, the game froze, leaving a loud scream and endless repeat. The screen flashed to the hero's face, looking back at me through the screen, with a gaping broken jaw. His eyes were completely removed. Jack still remained right behind him. His mask now gave a crooked, stitched grin. His, oh, his armored hand had pierced through the hero's throat completely. I jumped and ran to my console just to turn off the game. Before my trembling fingers could even reach the power button, a red ring appeared in the circular button. Hesitant, but I pressed the button anyways. No change. The image of the hero's frozen corpse was still screaming at me. I pressed the button again, and again, repeatedly. Nothing. No change still. In my desperation, I had another choice to unplug the system from the power outlet. I yanked the power cord, and the nightmare finally turned off from existence. The room was now silent. The game was blank, and the console remained dead. I never touched this game again until my dad finally came back home. Immediately as he entered the house, I approached him and asked where he got that game. He couldn't answer me straight up. Uh, y you know. I just figured it out somewhere while I was walking. Don't worry about where it came from. At this point, I wasn't satisfied. I begged him to tell me where I found it. I begged him to tell me where he found it. I felt it was necessary. I knew exactly where the game came from, but now I wish I didn't ask. He gave in. Well, I didn't want to bring it up because it's not really important. I confiscated it from a home by the owner of the game, who was deceased in the scene of the crime through a suicide. My heart stopped. But hey, it's not like the game is haunted, right?